So this is the harness that I would recommend. Um, it's called the Halty. Um, the leash eclipse here. So this goes over the nose. This goes behind the dog's ears. So it looks like a horse halter. So this clips to the leash and this clip clips to the dog's collar. So if for some reason the dog got it off, then you could easily still have the dog under control. I'm doing this with Lum because Lum is the only dog that I have that uh, doesn't already know it. So usually what I do is I hold it. So again, if you hold it like this, it looks like a horse halter. I hold it by the nose strap and I try to hold it completely open with one hand. I get the dog to come off her putting his nose into it. I mark with my marker word when the dog at first sort of sniffs at it. Yes. So my marker word is yes, you're going to use something else because you use yes in conversation. Yes. 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 Oi. Face out of the bowl. Yes. Yes. So now I'm resting it on his nose, yes, and he seems to be okay with that. And then I take it off. Yes. 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 Once they're 100% comfortable with that step, it usually takes several sessions. Um, then I do the part where you're buckling the collar. So I don't need the collar for that. I have my bare hands in a position that I would be using to hold the straps. I encourage the dog to come into me. Yes. So I just run my hands behind the dog's head in the same motion that I would use to do the collar. Yes. And the reason why is because a lot of dogs, Lum unfortunately has been trained to this already. Um, a lot of dogs, yes, will cringe when you put your hands behind their head like that. So I literally just take my hands, start at the cheek, and run up behind the ears. Yes. Again, depending on the dog, yes. I'm looking for their comfort level when I'm doing this. Yes. So I'd like the dog to not back away from me or duck their head or look uncomfortable in any way. Um, yes. Lum obviously does not necessarily care about this particular step. We've been actually been working on stuff that's pretty similar, um, so he's not super concerned. Yes. Again, that may take a couple of sessions. It may take a lot of sessions. It sort of depends on the dog. Yeah, that's a chin rest. You're very cute. Um, the last step is actually combining the two things where you basically take the head collar like this. Yes. Yes. And then you buckle behind the dog's head. Assuming I can buckle it. It would help if the buckle was right side up. Yes. So then the dog learns over the course of several sessions that every time this thing is on, they basically get treats constantly the whole time that it's on. This one's actually a tiny bit big for Lom. So I'm gonna grab the other one that I have. So 
so he's having a bit more trouble because there's actually food in my hand this time. Um, so you may need to work with him without food in your hand. This one fits much better than the last one. Yes. So you can see why I say that. I do want it to be pretty tight right behind the ears. Um, but basically he has complete and full range of motion of his mouth. And these little side straps prevent him from licking it off. So over time, I slow down treat delivery so that I'm not treating quite as quickly. So that he's learning that um, he has to keep that on without doing any of the weird scraping off things while he's got it on. Again, this clip clips to the collar and the leash itself will clip to this portion. So he's fighting this a little bit more, so I need to make sure that my treat delivery is a little bit faster than it was. The goal is, is that once he can stand there and not get treats for a full 30 seconds, then at that point I consider it to be trained and you can use it on a walk. So 30 seconds without a treat and without pawing at it. Once the thing comes off, the treats stop. So hopefully that helped um, and I'll make sure to send you the information about marker training as well um, and then you can use that in your training. Alright, love you guys.